tonight how hospitals in the area are preparing for coronavirus to peak when health experts think the surge could come. And Minnesota is asking FEMA to cover the cost of quarantining people who are sick with coronavirus. Plus, we're hearing directly from Duluth City Attorney after his abrupt resignation today. From CBS3 Duluth, this is the CBS3 News at 6. Good evening, I'm Kristen Bakke. And I'm Anthony Matt. Thanks for joining us. New developments tonight as the coronavirus continues spreading through the Northland. St. Louis County is reporting the first death related to the disease in the county. County officials say the man who died was in his early 70s. They did not share what part of the county he lived in or if he was hospitalized. Neither Essentia or St. Luke's leaders could share any details. Officials say there are additional deaths in the county under investigation that could be due to COVID-19. They hope to know for sure by tomorrow. Of five new cases reported in St. Louis County today, county leaders say at least some are connected to St. Anne's Assisted Living. The entire downtown Duluth Senior Care Facility has been placed under quarantine as more residents there are confirmed to have the virus. The first case at St. Anne's was reported over the weekend. The State Department of Health has not shared an exact number of patients connected to St. Anne's. As we continue to see more and more confirmed cases in our region, health officials from St. Luke's and Essentia say we have not hit our peak just yet. While they say they're prepared for the now, they worry about the future. CBS 3's Leanne Valdez explains. St. Luke's and Essentia Health Hospital officials sent Thursday morning that social distancing and the stay-at-home orders are working, but they're also asking Northlanders not to get complacent. I think it's really important, though, that we remain vigilant. We're not over this yet. Health officials say they're still expecting a surge of COVID-19 cases to hit their hospitals. It's just like influenza season. I mean, there will be a peak. Though they're not entirely sure when that peak will hit. The prediction model uh, have a pretty good amount of variability, whether uh, we peak in a few weeks or in a few months. Leaders with both of Duluth's hospitals say they do know they need more equipment to fight the upcoming surge. We're very grateful for these grants. We're grateful for purchasing of ventilators, but we don't have as many as we want. St. Luke's leaders say they used a grant to recently purchase 16 ventilators, but they don't know when they will arrive. Essentia say they, too, are buying more. And we want to be prepared for the worst. As far as personal protection equipment, or PPE, goes, St. Luke's says they have an adequate supply right now and have been buying since December. But they believe that may not be the case when the surge hits. The modeling shows us that as the surge starts to hit, the burn rate goes up and we go through our current stocks in really a, a rapid fashion. The problem is that the supply chain has been disrupted as the federal government has been moving supplies to areas that are hardest hit, and we support that. Essentia feels they're also well prepared today, but are unsure about the future. You can just about not have enough. We, we definitely want more. When asked if our region would return to normal. And I'm not sure about a return to normal. I, there, we're going to have to look to a new normal after we hit this surge. But health officials say as long as you continue to follow orders, they hope we'll stay ahead of the virus. Stay home. Believe uh, what we are learning from other parts of the country and really the world uh, that are being successful. Let's take a look at the number of cases in our tri-state region. In Michigan, there are now more than 21,000 cases with nearly 1,100 deaths. Wisconsin is reporting 2,900 cases and 111 deaths. In Minnesota, there are more than 1,200 cases and 11 new deaths, bringing the statewide total to 50. Worldwide, there are 1.6 million cases with more than 350,000 recoveries. New at 6, Minnesota is asking FEMA to cover the cost of quarantining people sick with coronavirus. During today's briefing, Emergency Management Director Joe Kelly said he sent a request to FEMA. Normally, during a disaster, states set up group shelters. But in this case, that could help the virus spread. So they're asking the feds to cover the cost of hotel or dorm rooms for people who need a place to quarantine. This includes people who are homeless or people in certain living situations. Think of a couple who share a studio apartment. In these and a lot of other scenarios, we need to provide people a safe place to quarantine so we don't make the problem worse. Locally, St. Louis County has been working with local hospitals to find rooms for homeless people who need a place to stay while they recover.
The Fond du Lac Band has put measures in place to make sure their community is staying safe in this pandemic. Rita Aspinwall, a Fond du Lac spokesperson, says on March 13th, the band declared a state of emergency while also issuing a stay-at-home resolution. This has caused the cancellation of events and forced many to work from home. Aspinwall added the essential workers for the band take their temperature each day and meetings are held virtually. She says everyone in the community is abiding by these orders from their elected officials. When you are staying home, you're not only um, protecting yourself, you're protecting your family. We're protecting our, our upcoming generations. We're protecting our elders. And um, I think the Fond du Lac community has been responding well. She shared that the band is doing public service announcements three times a week over the radio and on the Fond du Lac Facebook page. Wisconsin's governor is closing dozens of state parks. He says there may have been too many large crowds there despite stay at home and social distancing orders. None of the parks are in our region. For the full list, you can head on over to our website. Michigan's stay at home order will now last through April. Governor Gretchen Whitmer issued that order today as the state's confirmed cases and uh, deaths continue to rise. Her original order was set to expire next week. This follows Minnesota Governor Tim Walz's stay at home order extension announced yesterday. All right, Alex, let me's in for Dave tonight. Alex, a cold and snowy start to the morning today. Yeah, we had that snow squall warning that went through, which is very rare for this part of the country. That was the first one ever issued by the National wow. Weather Service. And what to think about snow squall, it's very similar to a thunderstorm, but there's not really any thunder or lightning in okay. its snow, but it's a wintertime uh, instability in the upper level. So we'll take a look at the Doppler and radar. This is a 12-hour loop, loop. I'll see if I can pause it at the time where we had that snow squall go through. You can see those really dark blues. That's indicating that very heavy snow that fell and dropped a few inch, uh, half an inch to an inch in the Twin Ports over just about a half an hour span. Lo zooming out towards the, uh, let's see if we get these graphics working. Zooming out a little bit, where we can see the whole system is a large uh, low-pressure system and is moving toward the east. But the good news there, it will move out and it will bring a little bit warmer temperatures for tomorrow. Today, very cold, around 10 degrees below average. You can look at the Almanac, our high today, only 35. Our average is 46. Our low is 27, which was just about average. And our plan for tomorrow, we're going to be starting off in the 20s, so pretty chilly there. But we'll be warming up into the mid to upper 40s, and I'll tell you how warm we can see on Saturday. All right, thanks, Alex. New at 6, a Bessemer man has been charged with attempted murder after allegedly shooting another man in the chest. Gogebic County Sheriff's deputies arrested 26-year-old Timothy Wigman around 11 last night in Bessemer. The 26-year-old victim, Tyler Mackey, is in the hospital, but authorities did not share his condition or what led up to the shooting. They added that the public is not in danger. Wigman's bail was set at $100,000. Two months after he was put on paid suspension, Duluth City Attorney Gunnar Johnson has resigned. Tonight we're hearing from Johnson himself and Duluth's mayor who shed new light on why he was suspended in the first place. CBS 3's Emma Quinn has more. Johnson notified Mayor Larson of his resignation yesterday afternoon and he told us he did not want to become more of a distraction within City Hall and he made that move willingly. He also shared details into what led up to that investigation in the first place. Now, former Duluth City Attorney Gunnar Johnson claims it was concerns over office management that led to his original suspension in mid-February. Complaints that I was not able to manage interpersonal conflict as well as they had hoped. Um, that I showed up for a meeting on the date scheduled, but I should have known that it was not on that date. Um, that's the kind of stuff that it eventually came. Johnson says the city hired an outside law firm to investigate. He says that agency completed a report of which he called the findings unsubstantiated. I think it is a vindication of, for me, um, that that report was very clearing of any tainted allegations. While CBS3 has yet to read that report, we have filed a data request with city leaders to obtain a copy. Despite Johnson's feelings that its claims were unfounded, he says he felt it would have been a distraction within City Hall for him to continue as city attorney. I've always tried to put the best interests of the city and the citizens of Duluth first and foremost. While I strongly disagree with the way things have been handled in the past few months, it is time for me to move on, and we have found an amicable way to do that. In an interview Thursday, Duluth Mayor Emily Larson wouldn't comment on events surrounding Johnson's suspension, but thanked him for his work with the city. Johnson was 
really important to the litigation for the last place on earth, uh, to the cozy building that we've been working on, to many, many economic development projects. When asked if Duluth residents deserve to know the reason behind the suspension of a city official whose salary is funded through taxpayer dollars, Larson said it's her policy to not release those details. We've been really consistent. I don't speak publicly about personnel matters. And I take my responsibility as mayor in managing a set of leaders really, really seriously. While Johnson says his next steps are unclear, he's proud of the work he and his legal team have done since he was appointed in 2008. I'm proudest of some of the little things that we've done working with counselors to address neighborhood issues and resolving small issues in a quiet and fair manner. And again, CBS3 is working to obtain a copy of that report. And Mayor Larson tells us that uh, the position for city attorney will be up, up, up next week. And as of right now, Deputy City Attorney Stephen Hank will continue to fill that role. And they say that interview, the interview process for city attorney will take place once the COVID-19 pandemic calms down. Thanks, Emma. Still to come on Live Local CBS3, how UMD students are using their artistic skills for a good cause. And like I mentioned earlier, we had a cold day today, but that won't last long. Warmer air making its way into the Northland. Welcome to Medical Insight, a weekly healthcare feature brought to you by the experts at Essentia Health. Here's your host, Louis St. George. Today on Medical Insight, certified nurse midwives Zeta Danaski and Amity Heimbach tell us about Essentia Health's comprehensive midwife program for low-risk pregnancies. Essentia is now offering a midwifery program. So a patient can see a midwife throughout the pregnancy and we have a 24-7 call service where the midwife will meet the patient at the bedside and attend the birth. So typically midwives will spend more time one-on-one um, -on -one with a patient during their labor, um, giving them suggestions, um, position changes, different ways to cope with um, the discomforts of labor, um, whether it be getting in the tub or massage, um, as well as the midwives can also provide um, different medication um, interventions as well to help them with whatever they want um, in their labor and delivery. According to Heinbach, women who use midwives typically have healthier pregnancies and are better equipped for a natural childbirth. The patient would come in and see a nurse practitioner or a midwife for the first visit and talk about risk factors for the pregnancy and then decide if you are a midwife candidate or if you should see a doctor for your pregnancy. Women want continuous bedside support in labor and a lot of women want a, an unmedicated birth or a more holistic approach to their pregnancy. The unique part of this program is that you can have a full midwifery experience with the backup of an in-house obstetrician, anesthesiologist, and a NICU team. For Medical Insight, I'm Louis St. George. This Medical Insight was brought to you by Essentia Health. To learn more about the services we offer, visit EssentiaHealth.org. Garden mats eliminate 90% of the time spent working in the garden and increase a garden's productivity by 10 to 20%. Garden mats let air and water through but block sunlight. The pre-measured holes make planting a breeze. We help people grow 100% organic vegetables weed-free. Garden mats give us our summers back to do the things we love. Go to gardenmats.com. I'm Chief Thomas of the LAPD. How did you get past security? What can I say? Badges love badges. Tommy, L.A. is a people town, but I'm the one that runs this city. Can we say we run it together? If you are in this town to abuse or exploit people, I will find you. I will track you down, and I will put you away. All in a day's work. Amen. Edie Falco is Tommy. New tonight at 10, 9 central on CBS. CBS 3 Weather is brought to you by Nicolay Law Office. And yeah, just talking back to that snow squall we had earlier today, it's a pretty rare thing to do, and it's also a very hard thing to forecast. I know uh, 
I didn't make a forecast the, yesterday, the day before, but I, I didn't think there was going to be any uh, big snow squall that would drop an inch like it did, but it ended up happening, and that's why they put out that big warning, and because it's such a big deal, and it's such a hard thing to forecast. Still, some instability in upper levels, dropping some light snow showers, but as you can see, slowly disintegrating, and that will be the case throughout the night. And as we have temperatures uh, cool right now, as we have those disintegrating snow showers and those dis disintegrating clouds, we're just going to be seeing uh, that, that snow those clouds and snow even clear out even more and that will drop temperatures into the low 20s tonight so rather chilly forecast for this evening you can see by 5 a.m tomorrow morning 23 degrees in Duluth 21 in Grand Marais really cold for this time of year really cold waking up to temperatures like that but the good news is that clear skies will allow the sun this time of year very high in the sky warming us up into the mid 40s low in mid 40s across Northland 41 in Duluth 40 International Falls 45 there down in the Twin Cities with some clouds. I think we're going to see a little bit more sun than the future cast is showing right now. By Saturday morning, a mild start to the day in the 30s and warming up near 50 degrees on Saturday. So really nice weather to start the weekend. Lately, we've had such a good stretch of temperatures in the 50s and plenty of sun on the weekends. Uh, but it's unfortunate a lot of us have to still stay inside because we are seeing quite nice weather for this time of year. By Sunday, we're tracking a system down to our south and it will slowly be working its way into the area, but it seems like the most of the day on Sunday, we will stay dry, so that's good news. The whole weekend, we will stay out of that rain and snow, just temperatures right around average, around 45 on Sunday. Forecast for tonight, we're going to be seeing temperatures cooling down, like I said, pretty chilly, well below average, 23 in Duluth, 18 up towards International Falls, Aiken at 24 degrees. Down in Wisconsin, a little bit warmer, but still below average. Temperatures in the mid-20s, 25 Wisconsin, 25 in the North Shore. Superior at 24 degrees. And highs tomorrow, very nice compared to today. Temperatures will be in the mid and upper 40s, 47 down towards Hayward in Superior, 46. So right around average, and it will feel nice out there with plenty of sunshine. Wisconsin, uh, Minnesota, excuse me, seeing very similar temperatures in the mid 40s. With the exception of the North Shore, they could see temperatures a bit cooler, around 42 degrees there for Grand Murray. So here is your seven-day forecast, and I promised you closer to average temperatures by Friday. You can see 45, 46 is our average. By Saturday, 53, so above average. Really nice temperatures there. Sunday, a cool down, 39. And then by Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, below average again. Kind of crummy temperatures there for the early part of next week. So definitely just get out there and take advantage and social distance yourself this weekend. Yeah, sounds like a good day on Saturday. Maybe sit outside on the deck, have a cold one, relax a little bit, social distance, all that fun stuff. Maybe I should have made the, the barbecue forecast, the cookout forecast. There you go. What a good day for it. <laughs> all right, thanks, Alex. Rebuild Duluth's program is getting closer to turning vacant lots into affordable housing. The program was born out of the mayor's State of the City address in 2019. Jason Hale, a senior housing developer for the city, says of the original 13 sites the program had their eyes on, 10 are now moving forward with agreements. They're expecting to start work at the end of the month. Hale says the projects should bring a lot of benefits. We really think it's actually a terrific opportunity to increase investments in neighborhoods throughout the whole city, um, to better utilize infrastructure and to try to encourage and incentivize housing development and hopefully more affordable housing development. So I think it's a win-win-win. It's a I don't know how many parties are involved, but it's, it's just a win all around. Hale says the program is currently on a trial run, but they are thinking about doing another round of projects. UMD design students are using their skills for a good cause. Their project is called Lend a Paw. The UMD, UMD studio design class created art featuring rescue animals and their success stories. Because of COVID-19, they plan to sell it online with proceeds going to the Douglas County Humane Society. Usually, they sell their art in person, but one student says the move to virtual might actually be a big success. Honestly, I think given the times, it could be even more successful. Um, everybody's in their house right now and looking for things to do. Um, and I think it's, we offer a really interesting opportunity to people um, to experience an exhibition, um, something that they can't do in real life right now, um, virtually. You can buy a shirt, sticker, or a printout of the student's artwork. The exhibition starts Friday, and you can find a link to it on our website. Coming up, the NHL draft rankings are out. Find out who from the Northland made the list. Kelly Hinseth is coming up with sports. Sees your new Can-Am from Duluth London Sports, the region's largest power sports dealer.
CBS3 live cams are brought to you by Kohler Chevrolet Buick GMC Cadillac. You're not just getting a car, you're getting Kohler. The nursing program at Fond du Lac Tribal and Community College is really challenging, but it has to be. It's approved by the Board of Nursing. And graduates here have been successfully passing the state board exam. They give you real-world experience with healthcare institutions across the community. I'm really glad I chose Fond du Lac Tribal and Community College. My goodness, that is a spectacular lawn. When you see a great lawn, it's all you see. Call the experts at True Green for a custom science-based plan to make your lawn thick, green, healthy, and weed-free. Years fly by. Your retirement date keeps getting closer. Rather than spending another year worrying about retirement, get a second opinion on your financial strategy. Let us answer your questions and show you how tax reduction strategies can benefit your retirement. Go to MPPLfinancial.com to download our free tax reduction checklist. Then call MPPL Financial this week for a complimentary second opinion consultation. A second opinion could be your best 2020 financial investment. 50% of patients with glaucoma do not know they have the disease. Call us at LifeView Glaucoma Center to schedule an appointment with glaucoma specialist Dr. Aponte. We're now accepting new patients at both our Hibbing and Ashland locations. You may also call to schedule a telemedicine visit with home eye pressure measurements. Call us at 218-517-5151 or visit our website today to send us an appointment request. Breaking stories that impact the Northland most turn to CBS3. Catch Eye on Parenting every Thursday at 6 with me, Leanne Valdez, on CBS3. Watch Anthony Mann weekdays at 6 and 10 p.m. on live local CBS3 Duluth. When you watched CBS3 Live at 5, you saw the news and weather of the day that affected you most. Essentia took action. Elected officials are encouraging everyone to orientation. Race course up the North Shore. You received a live, local look at what was happening around you, your family, and your neighbors. The city of Hayward competing for the Radcliffe Band in Wisconsin. Crafters and Gilbert to a sewing factory. For stories that are focused on the communities you live and work in, right down to your neighborhood. Continue watching CBS3 Live at 5, weekdays at 5, on live, local, CBS3. Our goal is an environment of decency, quality, and mutual respect for all human beings and all other living creatures. It's tremendously encouraging to see all across this country the remarkable interest on an issue which is not only uh, just an issue of survival but an issue of how we survive. A small idea world of change. Join us on April 22nd to commemorate 50 years of Earth Day. I chose a career that isn't easy, it's dangerous, and it's hard. Fond du Lac Tribal and Community College has set me up with everything I need to succeed. Through challenging classes, longer defensive tactics training, and instructors who work in the industry, Fond du Lac Tribal and Community College is setting me up for success. Get your news on the go. The CBS3 mobile app. Welcome back into sports. The National Hockey League has announced its final rankings in the scouting report ahead of the 2020 NHL draft. And a few native Northlands are on that list as well as a couple of future Bulldogs as well. They released their rankings for the 2020 draft and it includes all North American skaters and a grand total of four future Bulldogs crack the list of 217 skaters. In addition, two other players that hail from the Northland made the list as well. Topping the group is Andover High School senior and UMD recruit defenseman Wyatt Kaiser. Kaiser helped the Huskies to their first ever state tournament this spring. We'll have more from him tomorrow on CBS3. Hermantown senior Blake Biondi comes in at number 64. It's worth noting that Biondi's 47 goals this season ranks among the top of all skaters ranked high school and other leagues included. But we'll talk about Hermantown a little more in a second. Other future Bulldogs, Steinbeck Pistons Carter Loney at numbers 167 and St. Cloud Cathedral forward Jack Smith who comes in at 189. In terms of non-future Bulldogs from the Northland, former Cloquet Esco Carlton defenseman Mason Langenbrunner comes in at 131. He spent his senior year at Eden Prairie. Greenway senior defenseman Christian Miller comes in at 205. And that list includes a native of Hermantown in Blake Biondi. We've talked a lot about the Hawks this past year, even a lot this past week. And while we're talking about it, how about them Hawks in terms of hockey in the Northland? Here's a list of things that went down 
that they can hang their hats on hockey-wise this year. Number one, Hermantown boys hockey muscled its way all the way to the state championship, coming one overtime goal shy of claiming the school's fourth state title. Sticking with the high school level, Proctor Hermantown girls had an outstanding regular season, coming one game shy of the state tournament. Most recently, Dylan Sandberg became the most recent Hawk to sign with a professional team, joining fellow Hermantown alum Neil Pionk. Now, earlier this week, I had the chance to chat with Pionk, and when I asked him what he would tell the kids wanting to follow in his and Dylan's footsteps. Don't let anyone ever tell you you can't, because <laughs> I'm sure Dylan and I were both told that. Um, just because sort of we're from a small town in, in northern Minnesota, you know, it's uh, we proved that uh, that you can get there, so... Um, keep working hard and keep dreaming um it's, it's a little more fun too with uh, my youngest brother and the team on the high school team but um i even uh read reports on, on how good the youth program is um obviously the high school high school program has been good for you know the last few years here and but it's again it's another trickle down effect through the band through the series and, and even all the way down to the squirts um obviously with my youngest brother still being in hockey and Herman's home, we, we hear those kind of stories and and uh i think that's it's really cool for me to hear The lineage goes further just beyond Hermantown into the Pionk family as well. Like Neil mentioned, he has his brother, Aaron Pionk, who is currently on the Hermantown roster, who helped the Hawks to that state title game as well. And not to mention, we're not trying to leave a lot of Hawks out here, but we only have so much time. You got Jesse Jocks, who is currently on the Hawks, or on the UMD roster, who hails from Hermantown. Then there's Dylan Sandberg, who just left. But then you got Cole Kepke, who was drafted by the Tampa Bay Lightning, who will probably most likely spend next year at UMD. Of course, he hasn't made his official announcement yet, but we will wait to see if he does come back. That'll add a lot of scoring power for UMD. Certainly the lineage and the blood of hockey runs deep in Hermantown, Minnesota. Neil, or excuse me, Tony and Kristen, I'm going to send it back to you. Definitely still Tony and Kristen. <laughs> Don't forget here. about us, Kelly. I know you can't see us. <laughs> well, check out this video we were able to capture at Spirit Mountain this morning. This is that snow squall moving into the area this morning. It was a rapid moving system that coated portions of the region with a wet blanket of snow for your morning commute this morning. All right, Alex, let's get a final look at the weather here. Yeah, that was the first actual yeah, snow squall warning ever put out by the National Weather Service Duluth. It's a new thing they just started last year. We'll take a look at the seven day real quick. We can see. Tomorrow, warmer by 10 degrees, 45. Saturday, 53 degrees, really nice weather. Just a few more clouds, and that will be the same case for Sunday, except a little bit cooler for your Easter, 39 degrees only the high. And it only gets cooler through Tuesday and Wednesday of early next week. So warm Saturday, that's the good news. Yes, very good news. Thanks, Alex. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you at 10.